you've got a PowerPoint there, uh, and that can be usefully used uh, to reflect on what we've been saying, what I've been saying. Uh, I'm not going to follow it too closely. Uh, if we if we go down to number number three, let me go down to one, two, three, and then three. That's fine. Uh, don't don't panic. If, if you go back one, okay. <laughs> to don't panic. Can you go? Can, can you go back one? Uh, uh, there we are. Okay. I, I, I just find it fascinating. There are those who would say that, that we shouldn't panic um, uh, and that um, um, and this speaks partially to, to Lani's points about uh, about the nature of the democracy. Um, uh, Pinker, for instance, Stephen Pinker talks about the, the Enlightenment progress in the Enlightenment since the 18th century. We've seen so much progress. Uh, in thinking, in attitudes, in uh, uh, in enabling the demos, the people, to become more in power and much more in charge. Nonetheless, uh, as you've heard, democracy feels volatile. It feels fragile. Um, uh, have we lost a gilded age? Uh, I'll spell gilded better next time. Um, or what's going on? Um, bigger. Uh, in 2020 suggests that this volatility, this fragility is partially caused by a narrow definition of democracy based in rights, uh, not least the right to vote. Of course, that, that, that's critical to democracy, but it's, it's clear also that this is not sufficient. It's necessary, but not sufficient. So if we go to the next, next, next um, PowerPoint, please. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think what I want to say at, th at this point is is uh, a couple of things. One is uh, it seems to me that um, uh, we're we've uh, some of the things that have emerged recently uh, have uh, have led us to feel that we should be panicking because of the kinds of things that have emerged. Um, uh, polarization uh, has become central to uh, our democracy. Uh, um, real sense of conflict, a real sense of conflict, um, um, a real sense also of a lack of regulation and accountability um, across the piece. Um, and with that, a whole bunch of questions about who's got the right values. And I go back to Lani's final point about freedom. That is such an important point. Um, but whose freedom is it? Uh, if we if we if we go back to uh, the, the 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 Enlightenment, don't forget that Mozart wrote Don Giovanni, and Don Giovanni in the middle of the opera, and and he's a bad bloke. He's a not a nice man. <laughs> he abuses power in all kinds of different ways, and he sings La Libertad, freedom. I want freedom. Uh, um, the point I want to make there is actually number one um, uh, values are not straightforward uh, and, and democracy isn't quite in a position to handle that complexity um, uh, um, uh, you know the, if you if you go to the states we're in a position there where we have the the republicans and the democrats and they both believe in freedom but it's a different kind of freedom when is the dialogue going to emerge that enables that to be actually brought out and what's behind their different levels of freedom partially a defense of rights partially this polarization business now um, what, what i want to stress here is, is that at the moment i think we are a lot of commentators are making a mistake to assume that the polarization is largely the fault of right wing um, I don't think it is. I think I think um, I think we've got conflicting, conflictual, aggressive language about overcoming from the powerful, the powerless, uh, from different groups. It's a it's a false framework when that comes to democracy. Uh, so uh, we need to get real here about human beings. Um, uh, uh, and, and the problems that we have. We'll, we can we'll come to that later. Also, we need to get real about the nature of governing a country or a region or a, um, 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 an organization or a business or whatever. Um, one of our problems in terms of, uh, of humanity is the, is the notion, and there's good neuroscience around this. There are books like Willful Blindness by Margaret Heflin. One of our problems is that we, we don't want to think about complexity. 
We want to narrow our thinking down. But let's get real. Um, uh, the, the truth of the matter is that all leaders are faced, and all individuals are faced by this wonderful notion of VUCA. The, the, the social and physical environment is volatile, it's uncertain, it's complex, and it's ambiguous. And there's no way that we can put that back in the box. They're out of the box. There are no simple deals. And part of the problem about democracy at the moment is that some leaders think they can offer simple deals. Um, and if you look at the you look at the social media approach to Brexit, I hate to bring Brexit up, but there we are. Um, uh, the, 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 the social media approach to Brexit um, uh, was very, especially the leaders, was very, very simple and simplistic. Um, and with that, of course, comes an erosion of truth. And with that comes a whole bunch of questions. But those questions are not answered or taken seriously. Uh, no simple deals, no simple responsibility of a leader to sort things out for this. And coronavirus has reminded us of, the, of that. That's, that's a, a quite an exciting thought because suddenly it's the coronavirus has said, well, we're all responsible. <laughs> it's not just the leader who should sort this out for us, not just the Johnsons or the Bidens or wherever. We are all responsible because it keeps going back down to uh, our worldview. And, uh, and, and coronavirus reminds us that we are interconnected. Now, if we're interconnected, then one of the key things that we need to begin to develop is some kind of genuine dialogue. And this was more than hinted at by Lani in, 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 in her presentation. Um, what, is genuine, what is genuine dialogue? If, um, 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 Lydia, if you go, go to the next, next PowerPoint, please. Great. Um, 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 what is a genuine dialogue? Uh, it, it's, it, it's something about really taking communication seriously. It's something about enabling others to take that communication seriously. And it has at its heart responsibility. Um, uh, now, the, the following three, three um, 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 PowerPoint slides really talk about what that responsibility is. Responsibility to know what you're talking about. Really important. Um, um, uh, a lot of a lot of a lot of politicians, bless them, um, um, tend to wing it, and as a result, they often don't know what they're talking about. I once had a a, 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 a debate with Boris Johnson, and it was quite clear that he did not know what he was talking about. Uh, I'm not mocking him; <laughs> he has a busy time, <laughs> you know. But but at the heart of it, he hadn't prepared. They didn't understand the complexity of the issues. Responsibility is therefore, first of all, knowing what you're talking about and knowing about the environment in which you are operating. That takes a lot of dialogue and openness. It means being open to the other. Be they right, be they left. It means being hope open to, to their voices. Um, uh, uh, the second, if we keep going going through these um, these. Um, um, the next three um, uh, uh, PowerPoint is, so, is something about accountability, and accountability is is critically is critically uh, about being genuinely open. Most most of us are not genuinely open. Most of us do not actually listen. Uh, uh, Chuck McNamara in 2015 did some work on leadership and listening. Most leaders said we we uh, lead by dialogue, but when they were empirically tested. The fact is, they didn't. Communication was one way in 80% of the time. Um, so th there's something here about accountability is not genuine until we have mutuality. There's a mutuality. We can't be symmetrical. It's asymmetrical, that's for sure. You know, more power here, less power there. But we can begin to develop some kind of mutuality. And that, that mutuality is at the heart, I think, of democracy. But it means also we, the people, need to begin um, to take uh, to take uh, uh, President Lincoln seriously, by the people and for the people. Uh, uh, it's, it, it really is about individual as well as leadership responsibility. Uh, and then finally, and we'll, we'll end uh, at this point, we'll go to the next one. Um, uh, Positive responsibility. This is the third element of responsibility in leadership. And I think it's perhaps 
Well, they're all important, but, but this is perhaps most important. You see this emerging really well in Technicolor with the, uh, with the, um, uh, the coronavirus. It's about how we share responsibility. It's about how we create things in the future. It's about how we work together and negotiate responsibility as we respond to all the problems. Um, and this is, this is the, the way in which we do that actually focuses on our identity and enables us to develop our identity as a nation, as an organization, as individuals. Once more, dialogue is at the very center of that notion of responsibility. Um, the argument is that so many uh, of the aspects of human life want to move away from that. And therefore, we need to have leadership which enables us to come back to it, to face the reality and to begin to share responsibility um, uh, uh, local, national uh, and so forth level. Ironically, the only time that that actually happens is when the whole nation has uh, a, a threat uh, imposed and then we come together and we work together, etc, etc. It's almost as if we only come alive in conflict. So how can democracy enable us to come alive, not in conflict, but in a situation where we really begin to appreciate and understand difference? Because difference is of the essence of democracy. Uh, and understanding uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the differences uh, that surround us, the differences of the, the opposition parties. We can't begin to respect the other until we have actually given them time to speak and we heard their voice and we understand their feelings. How, how are we off for time, Lydia? What, 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 what have we got left? Are you timing me? Uh, well, we, Emily. You can take some more five minutes. No, 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 no. Two more, two more. <laughs> the, 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 keep, keep tight. The, the, um, uh, so, so the, 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 the the heart of it is, 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 is how we get the dialogue uh, moving and how in that dialogue we appreciate difference. Um, and the critical point about difference is number one, we cannot learn without difference. If we haven't got difference, we do not, and, and go to Mikhail Bakhtin and Sidorkin and all these guys, they, they, they're really into that. Um, without difference, we cannot learn. Partially because without difference, we can't look at ourselves and we can't see ourselves without a different perspective. It's all, uh, uh, Lani, as you know, basic peace building stuff <laughs> and bringing peace building stuff like Lederach into the, into the heart of our democracy. Uh, uh, seeing the other as a, human, as a human being, but we can't understand them as a human being. There you are, you see. Uh, seeing the whole and the connection, the points of strength and the connections. We're watching the, 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 the web of which we are a part, but we are a part. We can't stand apart from that web. But engaging difference, learning therefore. But as we engage difference, we're also, we're also engaging the other relationally. Uh, Bakhtin talks about the ontological nature of dialogue. It's not just that we're looking at different ideas or even different perspectives or even different worldviews. We're looking at, at, at other people and enabling a relationship to be formed and developed. We're enabling trust to develop. Serendipity, quite crucial, uh, uh, because that is um, uh, um, uh, a term which, which Horace Walpole um, 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 uh, invented um, based on, on the, the three princes of Serendip who, who spent their time moving around the world learning through sagacity and good fortune. Um, it was almost by luck. They learned on the hoof as they were, as they were moving around the world. Um, and in all of that, we can't then begin to engage in creative practice together. Now, dear old Joe Biden's trying to get that engaging in creative practice. There needs to be a lot more listening. Uh, and I think that will bring us, along with this notion of identity and the way in which responsibility is focused in identity, that will bring us to uh, think about in the next bit about how we can begin to develop democracy in this, in this um, human-centered way.